like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show, everyone. We're on our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Of course, uh, I'm very excited, as always, for this segment where we get to, you know, it's interesting. We get to talk about really whatever we want, Will. And as it relates to cigars, and, um, you know, books are something we've never talked about on the show. And I think uh, this is probably the first installment of uh, a book segment that we'll do on the show. Uh, but I think it's kind of interesting, and uh, I don't want to steal any of your thunder, Will, but just to kind of set the stage, I think a lot of times we smoke cigars in a social setting, and we view it as a very social activity and I'm fully behind that, obviously. You go to your local cigar lounge, you get together with your buddies, and you have cigars. And that's very much a part of cigar smoking. I think there's also times where cigar smoking is kind of a very personal thing. You just want to chill out, man. You don't want to talk to anyone. And you want to sit down and maybe watch a TV show. Maybe you just want to sit on your front porch and, you know, not do anything and just kind of stare off into space. But some of the times you like to engage in activity other than, you know, watching TV or really not doing anything and not talking to anyone. In a book, I think it's a great way uh, to engage in some activity um, that is really great that you might want to pair with a cigar. So I think it's similar to music as we did in a previous segment. I think there's a, you know, a great time to have a cigar is maybe you're sitting in your man cave or you're sitting in your, your front porch or wherever and you want to have a cigar and read a good book. And that's what this segment's going to be about. Yep. And I think our, my, I'm not a huge book reader, Will, because I, I kind of, you know, I have ADD and books and I don't always, you know, get along. I, I've read my fair share of books, but I'm not, like, I think there's people that really gravitate towards reading books, right? Um, I'm probably not one of those people, but I've read some really awesome books that are probably the ones I'll talk about. I, I'll, in fact, try and keep it to the more kind of geeky and nerdy books, and I'll leave out all the other ones for maybe a, a separate segment. My recommendations are very geeky and nerdy. Okay. And mine are, mine are not geeky and nerdy, but they're more at a simplistic level, I'll say. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I'll start and just say that um, some of the best books I've, I've read probably in the past few years, um, one of them, I happen to know the author. In fact, I've interviewed the author of this book series twice uh, on the computer security podcast that I do. And uh, his name is Daniel Suarez. And he's written a number of books. Uh, his first one was called Damon, which is not so much a reference uh, to a demon, but if you're in any kind of technology or computers, right, a daemon is kind of like a background process that runs on a computer. Uh, and that's more of what it's about. And then he followed it up with Freedom TM. Uh, and he's got another book that the, the name escapes me at the moment. Um, but... Damon, for me, was if you're in technology or, or like uh, science fiction, especially ones that lean towards technology, dude, Damon is an awesome, awesome book. Like, start there if you haven't read it. It's one of those books that you pick up and, like, you just have to read cover to cover. Like, I, I was up late. I was on vacation, like, sitting there, like, reading the book, not paying attention to anyone. Like, it totally captivated me. And there are a few books that, that actually do that. Uh, it's got very kind of like a Matrix-like like feel to it. There's a lot of computer hackery. There's a lot of technology in it. Uh, Daniel researched all of the technology, and it's actually kind of scary as time has gone on since that book was written. I'll read news stories um, a, a lot of times, and even today, up until today. In fact, I read one just today that reminded me of the book. 
Um, so it's probably one of my favorite books of all time, and that's Damon by, by Daniel Suarez. And it's really about um, a guy that owns a technology company and writes this software so that when he dies, this software monitors the news feeds and starts to do things and kind of take over computer systems and recruit people all on its own. It's an artificial intelligence program that does that. It is triggered upon this person's death. And it's just awesome, awesome. I mean, we're talking autonomous vehicles that are running on artificial intelligence, um, you know, new weapons that are happening that are using sound. Like, it's really, really cool stuff. And, in fact, I was just reading today about, um, you know, automated uh, vehicles or rather cars that, you know, when they go in for service are uh, hacking into other cars while they're going into service. And that totally reminded me of all the technology they talk about in the book, Damon. So very geeky and nerdy reading for me. But if I were to sit down and have a cigar, you know, this would definitely be a book that I, I would want to pick up and probably read again. That's good. You should, yeah. have, you read, you have, have you ever read that one, Will? I have not read. I, I, got admit, I had not heard of that one. Yeah, no, you, you definitely want to check that one out. It's awesome. Yeah. So what do you got? What do you got, Will, for book well, recommendations? Okay, so my criteria is a little different, and maybe there is a geeky aspect to it. Now that I'm thinking about. It. So one thing I'm not a big fiction reader, and I read very little fiction. And one thing why I don't read a lot of fiction is I get the book, I read it, and then it's kind of done with. So I tend to read more nonfiction if I'm gonna read. And when I'm smoking a cigar, um, I'm gonna I want to read something that. Basically, I don't want to divert my attention away from the cigar. So the best books to get from me are the books that if you walk into Barnes and Noble and they have the table in the front mm -hmm. um, and they have those big books with the big print and lots of photos that I don't have to read from start to finish. Mm. Um, that will give me enough information. And you talked about attention span. Right. Um, one, one that I constantly pick up is, and I'm going to hold it up to the camera. This is my ring magazine boxing in the 20th century. Book. Nice. Okay. I, I got this. It was, I paid at full price for this. It was like something like 20 something bucks. Um, this thing, and I'll just kind of, I'm not going to go through it all, but it has a year by year chronology of boxing by the month in the 20th century. That's awesome. So. You know, and this is where the geek in me, if I want to find out what were the world championship fights in 1971, I go right there and I can do it. And they have little like articles that, like they're in the newspaper style where you could just read it and, and you, you read it. And I'll pick this up from time to time, particularly when there's a uh, when there's a, a big fight coming up. Not that they'll have information about the newer fighters because this is going back to, you know, uh, pre 2000. But um, really kind of just. It, it, it keeps my attention. It keeps the uh, – being a big boxing fan, I kind of like the historical aspects of it. Um, I can get a quick snapshot and kind of satisfy my desire to learn with that. So this is a book I constantly will pick up, and, and from time to time I'll pull it off the shelf and I'll go into the garage and read it. It's, 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 and like I said, I can go back and read it again You know, at, at some other point. I don't feel like the book's going to waste. It's funny the the chat. I'm monitoring the chat room where we've got some new chat technology on our website, which seems to be working really well. And if anyone wants to send us feedback on that, please do. Yeah, uh, we're we're open for feedback. You know, we uh, have made a couple of transitions recently on the Stoey Geek Show with respects to chat. We didn't have one for a long time. Um, you know, we were with uh, Cigar Federation for a while. Uh, we had our own thing that was using some different technology, and, and now we're, we're on a new technology, which I really like, but I want to make sure our listeners are okay with it. Uh, but they're all talking about uh, books, uh, books in the chat room, uh, sorry, and one person mentioned audio books. And by far, for me, one of my most favorite audio books to listen to, which is a great thing to do, too. I think, you know, not just reading a book. An audio book is a different way to experience a book, and I don't want to talk too much. We could do a whole segment on audio books, um, but it's a great way to experience a book. And for me, the other geeky, nerdy book that a lot of people who are geeks and nerds will, whether it's computers or science fiction, right, if you're into that, you've probably read and or listened to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is one of the classic science fiction books of all time. Um and uh, that's an that's probably one of my most favorite audiobooks 
of all time. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah, it's a it's a classic. I mean, yeah. I, I could sit back and have a cigar and listen to that book. Um, yeah, and I'll, well, I'll go back to you when you come back to me. I'll talk about another audio book that um, it, it could be could be tied for my number one. Believe it or not. Interesting. Interesting. Do you have other books on your list, Will, or you just? Yeah, so I'll go to again nonfiction, but kind of a different style book. Um, I'm a big biography um, mm. reader, so I do like reading the autobiographies with with the um, I'll say the the assist. They tend to get an assist from a, a real a real writer a lot of times, and then sometimes uh, you know I, lo- I love sports ones. The one I really love is um, it's an older book. Um, it's it's Bill Parcells's uh, autobiography of the biggest giant of them all. So it was it kind of chronicles his years uh, leading up to the first Super Bowl with the Giants. Um, and he you know it kind of he really goes through those early years with with the New York Giants. Um, and when he came in there, they were they were pretty much a mess. Um, they had he had to deal with a lot of drug problems in there. He had a um, an interesting relationship with the general manager and it kind of chronicles the whole thing up uh, and they do a great job with the season when they won the championship uh, and culminating in 87. Um, very well. They, they won a, how many Super Bowls did they win under Parcells? Will, do you know? Two. They won two under Parcells. Two under he, did Parcells great, two under Coughlin. he did a great job with that team and they were a pretty dominant team in football when they were at their peak with Parcells. Yeah. And people don't, they did. And people don't realize People were walking out of training camp on. I mean, after his first couple of years, it, it was. He looked like he was done at one point. Where they were talking about bringing in a guy named Howard Snellenberger who mm-hmm. had won a championship in Miami, and it was kind of like he had to change his. his and Coughlin did the same thing. He had to kind of change a bit, and both both those coaches they changed and they ended up winning a couple of championships after that. And that book, the Parcells book, talks about some of the changes he had to make um, to himself to do that. Mm-hmm. No, that's pretty cool. Um, so one of the audio books that is, uh, near and dear to my heart is, uh, I listened to the Thrawn trilogy, which is, uh, a Star Wars series of books. Um, I want to say I listened to the first two parts and, uh, all three are available on audio book and it is just awesome. I mean, it, it pretty much picks off, uh, picks up where, um, Return of the Jedi leaves off and is just, it, I think, you know, from what people have told me, uh, is one of the best um, novels in the uh, extended universe for Star Wars. Again, kind of a more of a geeky, nerdy, Star Warsy kind of thing. Um, which is interesting because the movie's coming out uh, this December, uh, the new movie where, where Disney is taking it over. And there was a lot of controversy because they threw all the extended universe stuff out the window uh, and, and made their own storyline, which I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that that works out for them. Uh, and from what people are saying, people are really excited about it and, uh, it remains to be seen what the movie turns out, but the Thrawn trilogy, uh, as a book and especially as an audio book for me was really, really good. I think if you, uh, want to turn to anything in the extended universe, and I did a lot of research before I bought and listened to this particular audio book. Uh, the Thrawn trilogy is is where you want to is where you want to be. You know, interesting thing about that, and I don't want to digress into this too much, but with Star Wars, they came out with a comic book series uh, when the movie came out, and you're too young to remember this, I think. And it was great because they came out with six comic books that were on the movie, and they did so well they actually decided to continue the comic book. Um, and they did a, you know what happened after uh, the first Star Wars movie. And it became very popular, and that's, I think, where a lot of that Star Wars fiction started. But when Empire Strikes Back came out, they had the same problem. So right. they somehow had to kind of revision everything. And I don't remember exactly how they did it, but they did it and found a way to flow it back in. Um, but right. it kind of, a lot of that past history was gone, too. So, But I think a lot of, you know, the Batman movies, the Superman movies, I think they all have a similar problem with that. So I think Star Wars will be fine with that. Yeah, a punch in the chat is saying kind of along those lines of science fiction uh, reading, uh, Ender's Game was a great book. Uh, I, unfortunately, I never read Ender's Game, but I watched the movie. And from what people told me, like the, of course, the book is way better than the movie. And now that I've watched the movie, 
and I know like the storyline, I'm I'm kind of uh, upset that I didn't read the book first uh, because it's one of those movies where like there's a really big twist. And uh, they said to experience that in the book was a lot better than experiencing it in the in the movie theater. So that's a great story too. I haven't read yep. the book though. Yeah. Back that's to you, Will. What else? You, what else you got for books? I'll I'll pick one fiction one. Um, but it's uh, it's something I saw a mini series on, and I went back and read the book. Um, it's called Rich Man Poor Man. And mm. It was actually famous for being one of the first. Uh, and it was it was Rich Man Poor Man interested me because again there was a boxing story that was central to that. Um, but Wait, what really Rich Man Poor Man, not Rich Dad Poor Dad. No, not Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich That's Man, a different poor... book. That's a different book, which is also a really good book too. No, no, Th- yeah, I haven't read that. But this one is uh, it's it was written by someone by the name of Irwin Shaw. The book was out about forty years ago, but I actually recently read it. Um. And it deals with basically a German immigrant family post World War II to like the late 1960s, and it kind of chronicles um, two brothers: one obviously who becomes rich, and the other one who becomes poor. Um, not poor, but not as well. And it kind of follows that path. It, it, it's I actually thought the miniseries was better than the book, but the book gave a whole different spin on it. it there was a lot more in the book because they only could do so much on TV. So there's a lot mm-hmm. more going on in the book. They weren't the same either, which was good, but I still enjoyed it very much because I do enjoy that post World War II. To you know, I'm I'm, a nost- I'm very much a nostalgia guy. I'm into nostalgia, and just kind of reading that stuff. You know, it, it's it's very very in- you know the whole thing about when people it starts when the parade with the troops coming home from World War II. So it just kind of picks up with that, and you get a good feel for that that time. You know. Talking to some of my relatives, you know, they said it, who had read the book, they said it captures it pretty well, is what they told me who were alive then. No, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't have any other books that are really kind of popping into my mind right now. Those are the kind of the big ones that I wanted to. Uh, I'll just throw one more out there. Yeah. Because I got to be a stogie geek. Um, probably once a month, I pull out the tobacco retailer's almanac. Nice. <laughs> which has all in here blend information and. <laughs> so pump times when I have to go when I'm curious about something I'll go pull this up and uh they do have some it's on the they come out with this every year the IPCB artist book um so that is my other geeky book that I'll I'll read but that's more of a reference book so I don't it doesn't really count but I had to bring it up uh, that's really funny um yeah I mean there's a lot of um I'm just I'm I'm looking through some of the books I read recently um so I wanted because I wanted to cover one kind of uh, uh, nonfiction book in my list, uh, and that would definitely be Inside Delta Force. That was probably one of the last. Have you ever read that one, Will? I heard it. Uh, who wrote that? Eric Haney. Okay. He's actually a former. Uh, he was a uh, one of the original like Delta Force operators uh, in the late seventies and early eighties. He was kind of there from the beginning. And I I believe, and I don't have any evidence of this right, but I believe so much time had passed since he was a Delta Force operator that he was kind of given clearance to write the book, right? I mean, because they're a special ops group uh, in the the military, specifically the Army, uh, and performed a a lot of special operations. And uh, he wrote a great book about how they got their start, what the training was like, um, some of the operations that they ran. And I thought it was a really great book. I mean, that's another one that like I couldn't put down. Like I read, I read it oh, on yeah. my. It was an ebook that I I read this on, um, and it was just awesome. I read it when I was traveling um, a year or two ago. Like every time I get on a plane, that would be the book that I would read, uh, and I finished it pretty quick actually. It was a really awesome look into, do the training they go through is just un, unreal. I mean, he talked about the vetting process, and there's actually a, a TV show called The Unit. Um, which, you know, if you read that book, you, you might want to go watch that show too because there's a lot of uh, similarities there. And, uh, you know, what he... And actually, that TV series is based on his book. That's why I read the book because I actually started watching the TV series and I went and read the book. And, like, the way he describes the training and how they vet people that get into the Delta Force program uh, is pretty accurate uh, from what I've been told uh, from various people and, and what I've read, so... Um, just unbelievable, like multiple days in the woods with a really heavy rucksack and, you know, all these different directions. It's multiple day training period. 
uh, to get through uh, that weeds out a lot of people. And then there's like another kind of like psychological test when, once all that is done. So uh, pretty pretty cool book to read. I definitely, yeah. if, you're, if you're interested in that kind of thing, it's definitely a fun read. Uh, that sounds good. You know, I'm just looking at the chat room. There's some great books in here, but Paradox asked a really good question. He goes, is, re- is, is reading while smoking debonair or is it the type of book or is it the way you read or listen that makes it debonair? <laughs> it's an interesting question. It is a good question. Yep. I think it's pretty debonair to uh, to read any book <clears throat> while you're sitting there having a cigar. Now I don't think the cigar matters, but I would certainly sit and read while I smoked a debonair cigar. I, I would too. I, I don't read when I'm reviewing a cigar. No, so, I, 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 yeah. that's not de- that's not debonair. Right. I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, yep. with that, we're going to take a short break. Come back and talk about our stogies for the week. So don't go anywhere. 